Mr. Speaker, I now yield uh, one minute to the, to the distinguished Speaker of the House, uh, Ms. Pelosi. Speaker is recognized. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. And I thank the gentleman for yielding, and I thank you for bringing this important legislation to the floor. And I rise in strong support of the Fairness for 9-11 Families Act, another vital step to support our September 11th heroes and their families. Let us salute you, Jerry, Chairman Nadler, for your committed leadership in bringing this legislation to the floor, as I mentioned. On September 11th, Mr. Speaker, our nation watched in horror as an unfathom unfathomable acts of terror unfolded on our soil, gripped by an unthinkable nightmare. But for thousands of families, it was only the beginning. Children growing up without mom or dad by their side, missing smiles at dance recitals and soccer games, empty seats at graduations and weddings and baptism. Yet in the wake of such harrowing tragedy, these grieving families rallied together, channeling their sorrow into solidarity, transforming their pain into purpose, mobilizing their agony into advocacy. Some of them were very much responsible for us getting a 9-11 commission, which some in Congress had resisted. But without their outside mobilization, it would not have happened. Country and the Congress greatly admire the courage of the survivors and families who have come together to make their voices heard again on the ongoing. In fact, it was my honor to host many of them in the Capitol just earlier this month, or actually, yeah, September, we're still in September, to listen to their moving stories and learn how we can continue to support them. This is an injustice, as was described. Moved by their remarkable resilience, the House has worked relentlessly over the years to honor our solemn promise to the 9-11 families. We passed the Zadroga Act to ensure that they could receive help from the September 11 Victim Compensation Fund. And we passed the Never Forget the Heroes Act to permanently authorize those funds. But there's still more to be done to ensure they get every last cent they are due. I don't know that any money really makes up for their loss, but what they are due, they should receive. The Fairness for 9-11 Families corrects an outright, outrageous injustice, finally delivering the $2.7 billion that these families are owed from the United States Victims of State-Sponsored Terrorism Fund. This initiative was established to support Americans devastated by evils of international terror. But for years, the wives, husbands, and children of those killed on 9-11 were refused assistance from this particular fund, even as more distant relatives received compensation. Yes, they were getting funds from a, an earlier fund, but if you got money from the earlier fund, you couldn't get money from this additional uh, fund. And now we're, this is about fairness today. As Democrats took the majority, we ended this unconscionable disparity. Today, we vote to make them whole, delivering the benefits they were wrongfully denied. No amount of money, again, can replace those who were stolen away, nor restore the memories and moments that could have been. But with this legislation, we can further ease two decades of anguish, and we can take another step to ensure that justice is done. And I'm so pleased that it is being done in a bipartisan way, because at the start, that was not the case. President Lincoln once cautioned against the silent artillery of time, the slow, steady, steady fading of our nation's collective memory. For 21 years, these families have served as a bulwark against that silent threat. Here today, let us stand with them and renew our sacred promise to never forget. I urge a resounding and bipartisan yes, hopefully a unanimous vote, so that we may, we may empower thousands of Americans to become finding peace that they deserve. Mr. Speaker, as I have the floor, I also want to rise in strong support of the continued resolution to, commit, to keep government open and working for the people. This legislation ensures that full government funding through December 16th, giving appropriators more time to reach bipartisan, bicameral agreement on funding levels for the upcoming fiscal year. And includes fiscal, uh, critical funding to support the Ukraine, 
to respond to natural disasters, and to advance many additional key priorities. I thank the Madam Chair, Rosa DeLauro, Chair of the Appropriations Committee, for her strong, values-driven leadership to bring forth this necessary legislation. As I always say, as an appropriator myself, left to their own devices, the appropriators will find a bipartisan path. And we thank uh, Rosa for her ongoing work to assemble an omnibus government funding package that honors our values as a nation. That's the next step. But today, we proceed with this legislation as we do war rages in Ukraine. The legislation we passed today, Congress secures an additional $12.3 billion for Ukraine-related priorities, including security, economic, and humanitarian aid to historic and heroic Ukrainian people. This package comes at a pivotal moment as Ukraine's freedom fighters work to turn the tide, liberating key cities and repelling Russian forces. When I traveled to Berlin for the G7 speakers meeting earlier this month, it was a pr my privilege to hear directly from Ukrainian speaker uh, Stepanchuk, who offered an invaluable report on the state of the war. At those meetings, I reiterated America's unbreakable, unshakable commitment to stand with Ukraine in the fight for democracy. And, and by the way, every other speaker of the G7, every other speaker from the G7, or they call them heads of parliament in some countries, spoke out strongly in favor of democracy in Ukraine. So it was just me talking about unbreakable, unshakable commitment. Others did too. And with this supplemental funding, we take another strong step honoring that pledge, our country's pledge. Alongside this critical package for Ukraine, this legislation directs significant funding to help American families devastated by disaster. We continue to hold all the families affected by Hurricane Ian in our hearts and prayers during this difficult time, but we need money uh, to help them. The $2 billion or more in the Community Development Block Grant disaster refund in this bill will go towards supporting Florida, as well as Puerto Rico, Alaska, and other communities hit by disaster. But again, we need more. And we're also allowing FEMA to spend up to its entire year of funding giving the agency access to an additional $18.9 billion from FEMA's Disaster Re Relief Fund to quickly respond to disasters, especially appropriate now with Ian. And we will, we will need more. And thanks to the leadership of Congresswoman Teresa Leger Fernandez, we are sending $2.5 billion to help New Mexicans begin to heal, recover, and rebuild after the Hermit Peaks Calf uh, Canyon fire. She and the members from New Mexico were very instrumental in making sure we were aware of the disastrous mistake that was made uh, in New Mexico and how we need to address it. At the same time, thanks to the impassioned advocacy of Congressman Benny Thompson, we secured $20 million in Jackson, Mississippi, which is suffering a devastating water emergency this man-made disaster poses a direct threat to public health and demands urgent action. Additionally, we're proud that this legislation includes $1 billion more for low-income home energy assistance program, a vital lifeline to help families pay their bills and stay safe in their homes this winter. Now, uh, Mr. Speaker, this legislation is a package for the people. I urge a strong bipartisan yes on the continuing resolution so that we may swiftly send this bill to the president's desk, and I hope that we will have a unanimous vote on the legislation fairness for 9-11 families uh, to, um, again, support our 9-11 heroes and their families. With that, Mr. Speaker, I yield back the balance of my time.